In this episode of Electronics Essentials, we'll be looking at the difference between a switch and a relay. We'll take a look at some naming conventions, such as poles and throws, choosing the right switch or relay for the job, and some of the advantages and disadvantages of working with relays. First, a word about safety. Some of the switches found around your home can be used to switch line current, 120 volts, or 240 volts for our viewers off the North American continent. So if you are going to use switches and relays to switch line current, please be careful. I don't want anybody getting hurt. So before we discuss the difference between a switch and a relay, we should probably understand what a switch is first, and what better way to start than with something that everybody should be familiar with. A light switch. A light switch is probably the simplest thing you'll ever find in your home. And in the case of most light switches, they're very simple to operate. They have basically one function, to close a circuit or open it again. When it's off, the circuit's open and no current flows to the light, and the room stays dim. When you flip it up, the light comes on, down, the light goes off. Very simple. So what's going on in there? Inside the switch are a set of electrical contacts that are normally open. When you flip the switch, the contacts close, completing the circuit and allowing the electricity to flow. When you flip the switch down again, the contacts open, breaking the circuit and stopping the flow of electricity. There, clear on a switch now? Awesome! So now, what's the difference between a switch and a relay? Essentially nothing. A relay is simply a fancy switch that we can operate without physically having to move it ourselves. We can operate it with an electric current. Okay, now just a minute, you're probably thinking to yourself, how do we use an electric current to move something? How does that create a force that we can use to operate a switch? Ah, well, here's the neat trick. We can use a force through electricity by making an electromagnet. And that will allow us to pull on the switch. So if we have something magnetic, move something metal, but it's not magnetic yet. So what we're going to do is turn this into a magnet. This is an old school science experiment and all we're going to do is take a chunk of wire and wrap it around this little bolt here. Just got to keep going in the same direction. That's important. You got to make yourself an electromagnet. And we're here at this end, so I guess we'll turn around and go back the other way again. And we'll just keep on winding over and over and over, and we'll eventually come back to where you've got our wires back at the end. So, is it a magnet? No. Why? No electricity has been applied. So, I've got my little 9 volt battery here. And let's see what happens. Ta da! When we take the current away, it's no longer magnetic. So that's the principle we're going to use. However, we're not going to wind our own electromagnet. First of all, this is way too big, way too bulky, and uh, frankly draws a little too much current for what we're trying to do. That battery actually got a little warm. So what we're going to do instead is use smaller wire around a smaller little core and lots more windings and we'll get a much stronger electromagnet in a smaller size. What we're going to do is use that to activate a switch. And now, here I built this. Just kidding, I didn't build this, I bought it. This is a store-bought relay. Inside you can see there's a metal coil there and a bunch of other nifty little bits. But probably it'd be easier to rip the case off of this thing and have a closer look inside just to see how this thing really works. Well, rather than tear apart a perfectly good relay, I decided to mock one up for you instead. 
I've cleaned it up on the inside and removed some of the little tiny wires and a spring just to make it easier to see what's going on. If we pull the case off, we can see the real hero of the day here. That's our coil in the middle there. That's our electromagnet. And above it is a metal actuator arm that the electromagnet will pull on when we put the current to it. Hanging off the actuator arm is an actual contact. And we can see that when we apply current to the coil, the actuator arm is pulled down and the contact moves to make contact with this lower contact pin here. When we remove the current, the coil lets go and the spring, which would normally be there, will pull the actuator arm back up and the relay returns to its former position. If we move up here, we can see it a little differently. Apply the current, the coil pulls the actuator arm down, release the current, spring returns the arm back up and the relay returns to its former position. Now let's go back to our light switch diagram. But instead of flipping a switch manually, we'll include a little diagram for the coil and when we apply a current to the coil, that activates the switch and the current through the switch can flow. When we remove the current from the coil, that drops out the switch contacts, switch opens and the current stops flowing through the switch circuit. So there, hopefully that gives you a good idea of just how a relay works and how comparable it is to a switch. Now, for some of you keen-eyed observers out there, you probably noticed that the diagram I was using for the light switch and the actual relay mock-up I did didn't look quite the same. The relay seemed to have a lot more little wires and contacts and stuff than what the light switch did. And if you did notice that, good eye, because you're right, they were different. So we're gonna get into the nomenclature or the different terminologies that you would find when you're dealing with switches and relays. And that's where you get into the number of poles and throws. A pole is the number of contacts that it can make a circuit with. A throw is the number of individual circuits it can make. A little confusing? Here, let me see if I can help uh, clear it up a little bit for you. To start things off, we'll turn to our old friend the light switch again, as this is the simplest configuration there is. In this diagram, you can see that there is only one possible point of contact that the switch can make. This is a pole, and in this case, we can only make contact with one, so it's a single pole. Because the switch only makes contact with one thing, and when it's off, doesn't make contact with anything else, we are making a single circuit out of this. Therefore, it has one throw, or a single throw. This type of switch is known as a single pole, single throw switch. And it is often abbreviated SPST for single pole, single throw. So now, let's add a second contact in here. Since the switch can normally be in two positions anyways, we may as well find some use for that second position. What have we got now? Well, we can still only contact a single pole in any position, so it's still a single pole switch. However, we can now make two different circuits, one to the left one and one to the right one. So we have a double throw, a single pole double throw switch, or SPDT. Okay, last one, and we're gonna get a little nutty here. We're gonna double up on our whole little switch section here and add a little connector so that when we move one, the other one moves in tandem with it. So now what have we got? Well, now in any given position, we are actually touching two poles. So we have a double pole switch of some kind here. And because we can now make two circuits, one when it's activated this way, on the left and one when it's activated on the right. Because they move together and can't be operated independently, the blue circuits and the red circuits are considered to be one. So we have a double throw. So we have a double pole, double throw switch or DPDT.
One other piece of terminology you'll need to know about relays is that because they have a default or off position, we need some way of identifying which contacts are which from the outside because, let's face it, it's tough to see through this case. So, let's take a look at what we refer to as normally closed and normally open contacts. You can see in its off or inactive state, the top contacts inside the relay are already connecting, so we refer to those as normally closed. The bottom ones, obviously not connecting yet, are normally open. And because the arm in the middle is shared or common between the two of them, we refer to those as common. Because all those words are rather large and generally won't fit on the relay case, we refer to them by their abbreviations. Normally closed is NC, normally open is NO, and common is C. There, so hopefully that clears up the poles and throws and all that crazy stuff there and helps identify how you identify the kind of switch or relay. So now, how do you decide which type of switch or relay to use for different applications? Well, some of that's going to depend on how complex the circuit is that you're trying to build. For example, if all you need to do is turn a light on or off, then keep it simple. A single pole, single throw switch would be perfect for that kind of application. You just want to open and close a circuit and turn something on or off. However, when you start to get into a little more complex things like working with motors or trying to make a forward and reverse switch or something like that, then things get a little more tricky. So let's take a look at some of the ways you can wire things up with these different kinds of switches. Need to switch a light on and off? Then keep it simple and use a single pole, single throw switch. All you need to do is open and close a single circuit. Now here's a nifty trick using a couple of single pole double throw switches and that same light bulb. In this case, maybe we want to wire it up so we have a light switch at perhaps the top and the bottom of a set of stairs. We don't want to keep running up and down the stairs to turn the light on and off, so instead we can flip either switch to turn it on and off. And regardless of which position both switches are in, we have full control over the light at either end. Pretty neat, huh? Now for our last example, we're going to say goodbye to our light bulb and replace it with a motor. Because we're using a battery, we're going to make an assumption that the direction the motor spins is dependent on which way the battery is hooked up to it. That's critical for this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use a double pole, double throw switch in here instead of the other two. What we're going to do is run our battery into the center contact for the switch. And we'll feed the motor from one pair of output contacts. To assist with this, we're going to cross wires to the other side. So what are we in fact doing here? Well, it probably helps if we play chase the electricity here. We'll put a little plus sign here at the top of the battery and see which way into the motor it goes with each position of the relay or switch. In this position, the plus comes out of the battery, through the contacts, and up into the top part of the motor, so it'll spin in one direction. When we flip the switch the other way, the plus still comes out of the battery the same way, but now it's redirected down through the other's part of the circuit, and in fact enters at the lower part of the motor, so the motor will reverse. What we've built here is a forward reverse switch for a motor. And that has lots of applications. There's no hard and fast rule for which one you have to use. So experiment a little if you've got some extra switches or relays kicking around. And I'm sure you'll come up with lots of different ideas for things you can do with them. And lastly, we'll look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of using a relay in place of a switch. The first disadvantage is the fact that a relay actually needs power in order to operate. With a switch, you could flip it and walk away and it'll stay put and either stay open or closed. A relay must have power applied for it for the circuit to be closed. One of the advantages is the fact that the coil and the contacts are electrically isolated so that regardless of what's going on through the contact side of the circuit, it's completely impervious to the coil so nothing can affect it. This allows you to use a very small current, for example, 5 volts or 6 volts on the coil and switch house current on the contact side, 120 volts. Or you can go the other way 
If you've seen a hack that takes an old security light and uses it to trigger a relay, they do the exact opposite. They use the 120 volts on the security light to operate a relay, and that can be used to switch a low voltage signal. Finally, one of the downsides with a relay is the fact that it has that coil. Although it's useful for throwing the switch, there's an interesting thing that happens when you take the power away. Wait, what was that? What the heck? Better grab a snapshot of that. What the heck? What happens is, is when you apply the current to a coil, a magnetic field rapidly builds up around it. That's what makes it into an electromagnet. But when you remove the current, that magnetic field collapses. It doesn't happen instantly, but it's pretty fast. But that collapsing magnetic field actually induces a current back into the coil in the exact opposite direction that it was applied from in the first place, which means you could get a nasty spark. Or if you're using a low voltage control circuit to run things, you could fry it. So you need to include a diode wired across the coil of the relay like this. That way, when the field collapses, the current that it produces is shunted through the diode and is harmlessly dissipated. It's a simple thing to take care of, but it's something you do have to keep in mind. So, there are some of the advantages and disadvantages of using a relay in place of a switch. Get all that? Nah, I don't blame you. That was a lot to take in. So we'll have a little segment that we like to call Recap Time. Recap Time! Let's review what we learned today If you hook it up wrong You're screwed and it'll blow up in your face By now you should know that a relay and a switch are essentially the same thing except that a switch you physically have to operate yourself and a relay can be controlled with an electric current You should understand that poles and throws are the number of contacts and the number of circuits you can create and that different relays and switches are good for different kinds of applications. You should also understand the advantages and disadvantages of using a relay in a circuit. Well, hopefully that answers all of your questions about how to deal with relays and how they work. If you've got any comments or concerns, you can always email us. And don't forget to stay safe and have fun.